I'm Dermot Hussey. Welcome to the YouTube channel for the podcast Riffin Radio. For Perspective on Jamaican Ska, I spoke to Herbie Miller, curator of Jamaica's Music Museum, a one-time manager for Peter Tosh, and also at one time he reformed the Scatolites, Jamaica's seminal band. Herbie, the Washington Post recently spoke about a ska revival in the U.S. Globally, where is ska today? Interestingly enough, Dermot, for me, it's not surprising the uh, popularity and the amount of ska and the amount of bands globally playing ska from China to Russia throughout Europe, Eastern and Western Europe, and the Americas, including Latin America, there are literally hundreds of ska bands. Sadly, today in Jamaica, there's not one ska band. I know Everell Ray has been, over the last couple of years, trying to complete a ska record, but to say there's a work in ska band, there is no one. Sparrow Martin has some young kids. They don't work enough. And they're really not at the level, I am afraid to say, that will be cutting edge. I also want to say, and I stand corrected if anyone can dispute what I'm about to say, Jamaica has produced one scabber. That was the Scatterites. Every other band, Byron Lee, Carlos Malcolm, the Sheiks, the Vikings, name it, were bands that played popular music and threw in a bit of ska. The Scatolites played ska music. They had Honey Boy Martin who do an uh, uh, R&B piece, and um, I think, I don't remember, the cast, Tony DeCosta would do a sort of soul piece. That was that. But the book was made up of ska song. That's what they were known for. No other band, as far as I know, was a, 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 a ska band as such. There were bands that played top, top 10 hits, the popular songs of the day, and they threw in a bit of ska. So to your question, it's not surprising that over the world, there are so many ska bands and the, and the waves, the different waves, I don't know what, what count they are up to now. <laughs> uh, but from China to Japan, like I said, Russia to other parts of Eastern Europe, ska thrives. Now, the, the ska that thrives in those places of which you speak, is that the original or is it a, a contemporary version? It is... It is a contemporary version of other contemporary versions mm. over the waves of ska, be that the American version, Boston and the East Coast, California, or the British versions, or wherever others came from. It was more very rapidly upbeat. and. As fast as we know ska, it was time and a half, double time that. And it was more within the alternative rock, punk rock style of music. And it continues to be most appealing to that alternative market of those kinds of um, listeners and people who enjoy different kinds of music. So yeah, the answer is no, it's not what you and I experienced as the, the classic Jamaican music, but certainly it's, uh, it's rooted there, but it's gone somewhere else. How much do you think we're losing out, Jamaica that is, by not evolving a ska movement in the country? I mean, when you see what's happening outside of Jamaica, 
Why are we missing the boat? For me, it's a lack of historic um, references, historic knowledge on whose shoulders we stand, that we don't have a repertory orchestra band set of musicians who plays the book of the scatterlights in this case. It is also a sort of one trick pony style of dealing with pop culture in Jamaica, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> the diversity that we would have to uh, uh, embrace to have ska bands and reggae and, and, and bands and uh, what you call it, um, rock steady and mentor and everything happening in a broad uh, uh, presentation of our music, especially between 1950 and the present. It, it's not something that is recognized here. Dancehall rules and the best of dancehall is great. Dancehall has influenced every other pop music in the world. Mm -hmm. All of it. Not just hip hop. But apart from classic reggae, everything else is left down to, you know, a band like, say, um, Fabulous Five, who is able to play everything. Mm -hmm. Give you an evening at a dance party or an event where they touch on a little bit of all of that. But there aren't any bands dedicated specifically to any one genre of historic reference music. Mm. The original Scatellites are down to a sole survivor, Lester Sterling. Is the group likely to survive after he's gone? Well, Lester Sterling as the original instrumentalist that has served, that is the survivor, is one thing. I would like to also recognize Doreen Schaefer, the original girl singer with the band, mm -hmm. as another survivor. They are the only two survivors. Lester hasn't been performing and touring for the last number of years. So the Scatellites, as the world knows it today, is made up of a mixture of Americans. And um, perhaps at this stage, I don't even know if any Jamaicans are in there. I know a couple of African-American guys were in there. I've not seen them recently, but the last time I saw them, I don't think there was one Jamaican in there. Didn't you at some time manage, manage the band? Well, as you, as you know, Dermot, we, along with Ronnie Burke, I, re I, I pulled the Scatellites back together in 1983, I think it was. And they rehearsed at um, the Blue Monk. And then they did the Reggae Sun Splash. Mm -hmm. Then with, what, five nights in the Blue Monk, two sets per night. Then they started taking some, you know, everybody wanted, every tailor and every barber and Everybody wanted to promote a Scatellite show, most of which kind of flopped. Mm -hmm. Sunsplash and the Five Nights in Blue Monk were absolutely successful. Right. Then, uh, I assisted them to migrate and uh, hooked them up with a couple of booking agents and Shaniki Records. And they had a good, good time touring the United States, Japan. Europe, Scandinavia, and um, you know, as they left the scene one by one, they were replaced by other outstanding Jamaicans, such as Cedric Brooks, mm -hmm. Carl Bryan, among others. So yes, I offered them some management assistance, but at the time I wasn't really doing full-time management. Mm -hmm. I'd always assist them in whatever they needed from a managerial point of view. Talk about the Scatellites in their prime, their importance to the history of Jamaica's popular music. In their prime, the Scatellites, in 
my opinion, was the was the Jamaican version of Count Basie's orchestra. And I chose Basie because Ellington's sophistication and writings for his orchestra, but for particular soloists in his band, was not the feature of Count Basie. Count Basie's music was the head arrangements. He played the melody, and you jump and start soloing, Lester Young, Herschel Evans, etc., etc., Sweet Edison, mm. Clay, all of them. That's the scatter lights. They just played the melody. And then when it was Johnny, Johnny Moore, that is, or Roland, Tommy, Truman, to, to a degree, Lester Sterling, occasionally Jackie might get something in there. But the primary soloists were McCook. Alfonso, Truman, and Johnny Moore. In my mind, the greatest assembly of musicians in my time. I didn't see Roy Coburn's orchestra, I didn't see Eric Dean's eye from what the history and those who were around have told me. There were excellent bands, all of those 40s bands. From what I have experienced, Every band I've experienced from 1960 on up to today, I would say for sheer musicianship, imagination, the ability to turn on a dime and make an outstanding solo, any one of the top soloists in the band is, is what the top swing bands in jazz was all about. Put Roland in perspective in terms of his contribution to the group and as an individual musician. Who, who's that, Roland? Yeah. <laughs> Roland Alfonso. Oh. Of course, all lovers of the Scatterlights know that Roland was born in Havana, Cuba. Grew up in Jamaica and went to Stony Hill School. For me, with all the years I knew Roland and admired him and, you know, learned so much from him, I would say that he was very much influenced more by the jump blues and the more commercial type of jazz musicians like Gene Ammons or, or Arnett Cobb or, um, Illinois Jacquette. Oh yes, he speaks about Illinois as being one of his favorites. And in his best years, I'd say Stan Getz, or I'd say Lester Young, through Stan Getz, had a great influence on his tone and his sound. Not so much the Lester Young tone, more the Stan Getz tone, but the, the, the freeness of a Lester Young. Mm. That flute and style that he employed I would I would not put him in the category of a Tommy McCook as a straight up jazz musician though his solos fit into any style of jazz you throw a roll on him he had that that heavy depth of the big toned saxophone players as a matter of fact he was once in Europe after the demise of the scatterlights after the scatterlights broke up and when he came back, we were talking, and he said he met Ben Webster in Germany, and how much bigger than he, Ben, was, and how Ben had him all over the place like his little brother. So that big Ben Webster tone, that, you know, is what really is appealing about Roland. It's a sexist sound. The women love it. And um, it's quite appealing. It's breathy, it's, it's repetition. He it does a lot of repetition. And as you know, repetition like that, is, is, it's sweet because you get to understand. It's not as abstract. So you're, you're, it's more, it's easier absorbed. So really understood that. It's phrasing, man. He was, he was a star saxophone player in Jamaica in his time. 
with all due respect to my man Thomas Matthew McCook, <laughs> was so logical in his approach, you know, the, 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 the opening statement, the building of the solar and the out. Rowley was free. Yeah, yeah. Just really blowing from passion. Mm. And as a result, it was really um, endearing to the music public. And I think that's what Coxon recognized in him why so many of the songs were given to him to perform. Mm. Mm. Especially when this band was up at Studio One. Tommy got a few songs, Roland got many. Mm. <laughs> Is there an no, no. influence as well? And let me just say that this influence on people of the next generation that follow them is very, very important to um, think about as well. And while that next generation never got into the sort of music that we look at the satellites for, where improvisation was important. The, just the horn section riffing and, and backing behind reggae singers is what uh, that next generation uh, perfected. You know? Mm -hmm. so he, he's really a musical hero to us in Jamaica. Herbie, that sounds like where we leave it, man. Thank you so much. Anytime, D. Keep up the good work, Reggie. And I see you have, you're being flanked by Bird and Sonny Rollins. Yeah, man. You have to get a company on a Sunday evening like this. <laughs>